Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Anne. I hope this finds you well. I hope you guys are good. I'm glad you guys are, you know, picking up stuff and are learning more things. To me, the whole vision or the whole purpose is to provide information that I would have liked to have, you know, someone tell me when I was in medical school, when I was in high school, when I was starting out with my job for the first time. Um, so it's just, you know, to create that sort of community or just to provide them with access to someone who can answer some of their questions. People come from areas where they're the first, you know, doctor or the first person in the area to even go to medical school. So, so yeah, I hope I, you know, add to your knowledge and, you know, I'm glad that you guys are learning something and it, that it's making a difference and adding value in your lives. It's making me happy, y'all. We are growing. Um, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. Make sure you also like. Um, I guess some people don't understand the concept of liking. So sometimes if you keep on coming to, to watch my videos, that means that you like them. And if you like them, then hit the like button so that it, more people who are like you are able to see the videos or, so that my videos are also recommended to someone else who might be in the same position as you, have the same profile as you. So that is the whole purpose of AI. So yeah, today I will be talking about um, policies that doctors usually go for. So this might not only be beneficial to doctors, but can also be beneficial to people in other careers who, you know, are unaware of the presence or the use or the benefit of such policies. This video is by no means, by absolutely no means, Miss Y2.5 subscribers sponsored. Um, this is basically some of the stuff that I, I learned and are some of the policies that I also have. Um, that I see and find value in. So I hope you also benefit from them. I am by no means a financial advisor. I am by no means a financial advisor. So with regard to a lot of the things here, you have to go further to find out more and talk to an, a financial advisor to get more information regarding the policies, the amounts, etc. So this is almost just like a, an overview, you know, at the end of this video, it's, it will be beneficial for you to actually go to an actual financial institution or um, seek advice from a financial advisor who will advise you better. And, you know, yeah, like in terms of finances, literally we are working with grade nine <laughs> EMS. <laughs> like that is literally as far as I went with finances. So in case some of my terminology is off or whatever, I apologize in advance. So basically I'll be listing the policies um, that I have with the various institutions that I find beneficial or I find useful. And these are the policies that a lot of my doctor friends and a lot of doctors are using. So basically what happens is that from sixth year, I literally apologize for the noise for the kids. So basically from, from sixth year, I think fifth and sixth year, you already have financial advisors from the various financial institutions come to your university to give out presentations on the different policies to take. So they are normally linked with the financial institution or are brokers. So brokers are sort of like, People like middlemen, they will, you know, they also gain. There's also financial gain from them in getting you to join a financial institution. So, or getting a policy from that specific institution, just like how there's financial gain when a financial advisor from, let's say, Sanlam signs you up. So, so brokers are sort of middlemen. And the nice thing, I guess, about brokers is that they're not really linked to any institution. So they sort of give you an overview because they'll benefit from whatever you take anyway. So it's not like they can persuade you to taking a specific um, policy from a specific institution unlike a, bro a financial advisor that is linked to a company or or maybe Sanlam or Liberty whatever they are more purpose-driven and they're working with the type of policies that they have unless they're honest and can say okay no actually we don't have maybe this other institution has actually something that's better of which I'm sure they're probably not allowed to do that but unless they actually do that they'll probably sell you what they have with that being said let me start with number one with the first policy that every human being under the sun should have. And that is a funeral policy. I mean, you know, there's no two ways about it. You need a funeral policy. Who's gonna bury you? Like, you don't need people struggling. Ah, Bob, like something, you know, take something. People need money to bury you. And um, it's good for anyone to have a funeral policy. Some people will take them up for their family members, me, your mom, your sisters, whatever, so that should they die, you're able to, lib to, be able to liberate those funds. Um, and use them for the and use them in the event of death i mean eventually so okay we are all gonna turn into dust we're all gonna die um but we don't want you know how black people are like with funerals we want funerals to to be a financial burden to your family so 
it's important that you have a funeral policy get one preferably one that pays out cash i know there's ones that pay out service but you get a casket and don't don't um yeah so whichever one you know get it number two i feel every every person should have and it's, it's something that's not normalized especially in the black communities get yourself a will like get a will brah like i'm not gonna be explaining the importance of getting a will people need to know what needs to go away who needs to get what when you die and sad part is like people don't like having to do wills because they they're scared to think about the fact that they're not gonna live forever of which we all know we're not gonna live forever so it's important that you get a will and sometimes a will is linked with um sometimes a will is linked with like a company will draw up a will and they'll have a set of lawyers who will manage your estate should you die. An institution that I know focuses on that, that a lot of people I know are using is Capital Legacy. I don't know if there's other ones. You guys can just list them down if there's another one that you know. Um, so they will draw up your will. Um, basically, you'll say what you want to say, what way goes what, who does what, whatever. They handle the whole, you know, your whole estate, especially if you want to be someone with assets. Because I know, you know, you're going to, especially if you go, go into business, whatever, you're going to grow as, a, as, a, as an individual and accumulate assets and things and things like that. So you need a, a group of people and lawyers that are going to, to manage your estate and who are going to assist with easy don't like change of ownership you have to you know go and declare you know the assets and all the bank accounts and all these things it makes it easier if there's a lawyer especially if you die and your kids are young or your family is still you know young um it's also important that there's a bunch of lawyers who will handle that so they deal with things of the estate with two advertising keys and there's like a high court it's a bunch of things that I know nothing about, but I know are necessary, you know. So those people you pay monthly, a monthly fee towards. It's not a lot, man. It's, it's around 200 to 300 rand in a month. And, you know, they do those things. Should you die, they will handle the whole damn thing. So number three is a life cover. A life cover that, um, that covers basically death, disability, and dreaded disease or critical illness. Né? So um, they, it has to cover these three things. Most doctors will go for either PPS or Sunlam when it comes to this, but there are other companies that offer this, like, for example, Liberty. Okay, let's start with the life cover in the event of death. Should you die, they pay out their lump sum to your family. It assists with the amount of money that they have and is split among your family members. Some banks, should you get a mortgage, will require you, especially if you get a home loan, they'll require you to have some sort of life cover because the life cover sort of is assurance or surety that the, the debt will be paid should you die. So it covers the debt first if you have a mortgage, home loan, don't don't. Um, and, and then it's the re remaining amount is given to your family. So, yeah, as you accumulate assets, especially think things like especially things like home loans, doesn't shallow, more houses, property, you probably have to increase your life cover and you have to get, um, you know, a higher amount as time goes. So life cover is important in terms of death. In the terms of disability, let's say, for example, you are a neurosurgeon and you, you know, get into an accident and you lose both your arms. You also, they also pay out in that instance, in instances where you are disabled or debilitated and can't really do your job. Same applies for when you get critical illnesses, but there will be, you know, a list of illnesses that they list up. So it's up to you to just go to the fine print of the whole policy. So basically number four is income protection. This is important. Important. And there's only literally two companies that do this right and give it to you right. I don't care. Someone go find me another company. Like, I don't believe you. I don't believe that there's another one that does this the way it's meant to be done. So it's basically PPS and Sanla. They have their whole income protection. Why do you need income protection as a doctor? So this is because majority of our salary comes from overtime. Okay, not majority. Like 30% of our salary. <laughs> 30% of our salary comes from overtime. Should you be in a position where you're unable to do overtime, you don't get your full salary. Be it uh, maternity leave for female doctors, be it if you're hospitalized or put on sick leave or put in a mental institution, etc. So in those cases, income protection is of high importance. So majority of the of these companies will say they'll pay out if you're hospitalized for a set number of days, maybe three days, or a given sick leave for like seven days. Um, I know a lot of people got a lot of money uh, paid out to them when they were, you know, put on sick leave during that whole COVID period where you had to isolate, don't do news, isolate for 14 days. So that came into play and was beneficial in that instance. And um, in the case of maternity leave, if you have in income protection, then you also, they also sort of like pay you out maybe like 60, 70 K. They pay you out that amount and basically to make up for the fact that you won't be getting your monthly 
um, over time. Some of the policies, if you have dependents that are hospitalized, let's say your child is hospitalized for like more than 10 days or whatever and you can't go to work, they also pay out a certain amount for the days that you will have not have gone to work. So, in general, to income protection, you know, is important. It's important, man. And then let's move on to number five. And number five is medical aid and gap cover and i say and gap cover because gap cover is equally as important i know a lot of doctors will especially interns until you're trying to mobilize funds so that you can drive that ferrari of yours or that expensive car so um a lot of doctors won't get medical aid initially and that's like i don't think it's a good thing like i, I don't like I, guys come on at this point in time do you really like do you really want to sleep at a public hospital really guys like at this point in time and it's not that there's anything wrong with like public hospitals per se because there'll be your colleagues or whatnot. It's just for the comfort, like to just have a nice bed, to just get nice food, so that is not like speed it up, you know. Um, CT scans, don't don't. Some people will say, okay, I'll speak to my friend to speed up the CT scan, but I'm still like really like. The medical aid is literally just solely for convenience sake, ne? So most doctors that I know will pick a hospital plan either with maybe discovery, prof med, it means which it's not there's nothing special about any of them and will get gap cover on top of it. Most won't get a full medical aid because I mean we can get we can get like pills from the hospital. We can get prescription from our friends, we can have someone at work see us if we're sick. So it's not like you are in dire need of of you know outpatient GP visits, things like that. We don't really need that um it's not really important it's not really important but most people who are into this whole medical aid thing will will get to EJMs, especially if they're working in public um other than that it's important guys i don't know come on really ee gap cover is important because sometimes medical aid won't cover like the whole thing um, especially in instances, let's say you get, um, you know, a cancer and you need chemotherapy or you, you are in a car accident and, you know, there's these expensive, you know, orthopedic ops that have to happen, spine, don't, don't, then most of these funds tend to run out and then the ICU tends to run out and get depleted. So a gap cover is just to, to pay for the shortfall or should your medical aid say if funds is depleted, then it just covers the rest, ne? so that you don't have to cough up 200k from nothing. Let's move on to number six. Number six is a retirement annuity. So a retirement annuity, uh, hmm. so basically you have the option to not take ERA, ne? and that is during internship. Because it's contractual, it's not like forced. You don't have to. So they only tax your money and give it to you, literally. You you get the whole lump sum. And um, you don't account your GEPF because it's really a two-year contract. Comsev is a one-year contract. I call GEPF a forced unless you go to them and specifically pick and say that you want to GEPF. So some people will go specifically ask for this so that they are able to get the money when they finish Comsev. So, or finish internship. I don't know if internship... Yeah, but internship... I stand to be corrected. I'm not sure if internship applies or if it's just ComServe where you can take a GPF. That the reason why most people will do that or some people choose to do that is that at the end of of the year or plus the pelly contract, they give you your money. It's almost like Umdu who is resigning. Yeah, well, so they give you all that money that you've been paying and it's nice life. But cash, lump sum. Personally, what I did, I took an RA during ComServe and internship. And as advised, you know, by financial advisors, there's a whole calculation that they do when it comes to things of RA that where, where if it hits a certain amount or percentage, whatever, I don't know what it is, I tend to be corrected. If you're paying a certain amount of a premium, um, then you basically get almost like 40%, if not more, of your premiums back when you are doing your taxes that season. So it's so, so it's almost like an investment with 50, with 40 percent interest yeah well so you get that lump sum back and then you reinvest it in something else for example i think it was around like it was some ridiculously high amount i think three from 3k and above that's when it starts making a, a huge difference in terms of the money that you you can get back how will you factor into into um, a retirement annuity Different financial institutions have it. It's not there's nothing special about ERA, like you can't say. But most people go for Sunlam. But ERA, ERA, with you guys, like there's nothing really special about it. I personally, I don't, I don't think there's anything different or special about the different financial institution and the things they offer in terms of your retirement annuity. I know in first year internship, most people will get like 24k. Second year internship, most people get like you know 22k, if they do this whole 3k situation and above. 
um, and then ComServe maybe with my 15 to 20k if they also have medical aid in the vicinity. So you're also able to sort of claim back the, the amount and maybe reinvest it in something else. Yeah, well, when you become a medical officer, um, UGPF, UFOS, like they just take your salary. Like there's a set percentage that they just take. Like you don't have a choice. Yeah, <laughs> So it's up to you whether you want to keep the RA or not. You can keep both and get more money when you're doing your taxes. That also means more money when you retire. So it's not like it's a win-win situation, man. Like take an RA just. So number seven is credit life and credit shortfall. So these are offered by either your insurance company or just like some privately owned company. There's nothing special about, you know, the various companies. So credit shortfall, for example, if you have a car and I know if you have an expensive car, um and you it's written off for example i know a lot, a lot of doctors like it's a pandemic in like, their cars that are written off it's a pandemic but insurance companies will write off like a scratch like it's, it's just ridiculous so yeah with that being said e-credit shortfall ne? let's say you take it up with your insurance and you bought your car for maybe 700k and um have paid off a couple of years or a year or two so they look at um how much you owe based on what you've paid on the initial debt thus far and they look at the book value so that difference is the credit um, is, is basically the shortfall and that policy or so basically that policy or insurance will pay for that shortfall so that if you go on and buy a new car that shortfall is not added on to your new car debt because you owe the bank still yeah well so, so it's also something that's also beneficial, but I don't know. I personally feel credit life is also one thing that's also the most important, especially if you take it up for your assets, like your house, you can take it up for your car as well. So that in the event of death, um, if you are still owing that they pay off the, res the remaining debt essentially so that e life covers that could don't fill up the gap and take from what your family could be getting, um, as you know, a life cover, yeah. So, so personally, for me, I think credit credit life is also it's also quite important, and it's especially nice. I think we, when it comes to credit life for mortgages, it decreases every year. You sort of like paying off the debt, um. So it's not at a standstill. The more of 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 the debt that you're paying off, the less and less that you're paying towards the insurance. So credit life is important also, so that should you die. But so that your 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 money and your pensions and all your things goes to your family and your kids or whatever, um, rather than pay off so much debt that will be remaining, especially if you die earlier on in your career. So yeah, I hope you find that useful. So I know people don't like the serious stuff. They don't want to think about death. They don't want to think about the fact that eventually you have to plan for death and plan for these instances. Yeah, we too in terms of insurance companies, it could be a scam or whatever. It's up to you, but you're working on probability and likelihood of you getting into an accident, for example, of you something bad happening to you. So it's good to rather be prepared so that you're safe rather than sorry. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and um, if you have any questions, link them down below. Also, I'm not a financial advisor. Any more questions that you have, just go to your financial advisor and ask them oh i heard about life cover tell me more about it oh i heard about credit life how can it benefit me oh i heard about this how can it you know how can i go about it you know ganji na ganji so so yeah if you're also using any of this policy you know you can just be like oh i'm using this and it's working for me or whatever or you know how they benefited you if you've benefited from any of these policies that i mentioned and um yeah so i'll catch you in my next video make sure you like you comment you subscribe um and stay safe i will catch you later bye